Hey everyone, it's Jim, and today I just wanted to bring to you a quick video of showing how to set up a basic Melee system. So I'll start by doing a quick demo. Here I am, I have my third person template project, and when I press the left mouse button, I can swing an invisible sword. If I go over to this orangish red sphere, which represents an enemy, and I swing my sword, I can see that I'm interacting with that enemy. And on the fourth swing, the enemy will call I am dead and it will destroy itself. So let's just show how to create this simple system very quickly. All right, let's get started. I have Unreal Engine 5.4 open and I'm just gonna create a new project from scratch. We'll select this third person template project. We'll keep all this stuff the same, blueprint project. I'm just gonna call this Melee Basics, but you can call it anything you want. And then I have it set to go into an external drive. So I'll hit Create here. All right, and if you haven't used this project before, just real quick, when I press play, I can run around, I can jump, um, but otherwise I don't have any actions that I could take. So what we wanna do first, I do just wanna get some animations set up and I can get some basic animations using Mixamo. So I found this one of swinging a sword. There's quite a few on here if you search for sword. And I'm just gonna create a new folder here called Mixamo. And I'll use this to store all those Mixamo assets. In order to use these animations on our Unreal Engine character, we just need to retarget them. So I can do that really quickly. If I right click on one of the animations and then go to retarget animations, I can then find my Unreal Engine skeleton and there is a bug, so sometimes you have to do this twice. And then when I click the animation, it shows that my Mixamo asset and my Unreal Engine asset are using the same animation. So I can select Export Animation, and I wanna put it where the rest of them are. So there's this folder in the default project where you go to Characters, Mannequins, Animations, and then Manny, and I'll export that. And now I can see that that animation is here. So I'm just going to rename it to Swing Sword. And then I just want to create a montage from this. So I'll right click again on this one and I will go to Create Anim Montage. And so here's my animation montage now. It's in the folder with the rest of the animation. So the next thing I wanna do is get this set up on my character. So in third person, there's this third person character and we'll open up that and I'm gonna go ahead and dock it up here. And then in my input folder, I wanna create another input action. So I'm going to go to input, input action. And I'm just gonna call this basic attack. And then I'll go ahead and map that and I just wanna map it to left mouse button. So when I click the left mouse button, I will call the basic attack event. Here I can type IA basic attack and we'll get that event. And for right now, all I want to do is play an animation montage. And I can find that montage now. And so I'll see that when I click the left mouse button, my player is going to swing an invisible sword. Now, there are some things that we could do. For instance, the feet aren't moving with the player. If we wanna spend some more time, we could get this looking pretty. The point today is just to show you how to get the basic combat system set up. So the next thing I wanna do is go back to this animation that we have for swinging the sword. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna move this slider to right about where I think the impact of the sword would happen. And I'm going to right click in here and say add notify and then say new notify. And I'll just call this attack. So now when the animation hits that point, we will call this animation notify event. And we can key into this on our animation blueprint. So down here, and if we search here for notify and here we can see this anim notify attack. 
So I'm just gonna pull off this and just do a print string just to show really quickly that this is working. So now when I swing my sword, when it gets to that point of the animation, it's actually going to print hello. And just to show that this is working, I can change this to say attack and now it's calling attack. So the next thing I wanna do, what I usually like to do, it depends on the person, but the easiest way in my opinion is just to create a little sphere that would designate a damage area and anything that's in that sphere is going to get damaged by my sword. So I'll say sphere trace by channel. What we wanna do is we wanna find a point in space directly in front of the player because that's where the sword would be passing through. So. Up here in this default project, we set this character so we can get a reference to that character. And we can say get world location. And we'll use the capsule component because this is the root component for our character. And so if we were to plug this in here, if you've ever used the sphere trace, this is just gonna get a location of wherever the player is. We wanna get a location in front of the player. So I'm also going to get forward vector and I want to multiply this by some number. And this number at the bottom here would be the amount of space directly in front of the player. And then I want to add these two things together and this becomes the start and actually the end point of our sphere trace. So the last thing we need for this is just change this bottom pin to an integer and I'll just type a number in here for now. We'll start with 75 and see how that looks. And then I just also need to set some radius for my damage area. So I'll start with 50 and we'll see how this looks. And now when we swing our sword, we'll get a little sphere directly in front of the player that is going to show a damage area. And that looks a little too close, so I can just adjust that. Let's try 150. And that looks like a good area where something that's in front of the player would become damaged. So let's create now something that we can actually damage. I'm going to go to my blueprints folder and I'll just create another blueprint. This can just be a pawn and we'll call this BP enemy. And I'll just add some visual representation of my pawn to the world so I can see when I'm doing damage to it. And we can just make it this orangey color. And let's just put one of these into our world. And if you wanted to, you can continue to write this code here. One of the things for me is I try to use, you know, good practices for programming. There's no problem necessarily with you putting this functionality on the animation blueprint but the animation blueprint really should only be handling animation functions. What we should be doing is probably programming all of this onto the actual character because we want the character to be the class that's doing the damage. So what I will actually do is go to my third person character and I'm gonna create a new custom event and I'll call this basic attack. And I just wanna take all of this and I'm gonna copy it and I'll just paste it into here. And we will get one small issue and that's that this capsule component needs a reference to the actual capsule component of this actor now. So we can just plug that in there. And now this functionality exists on our character. So our character will be the one that calls this function. And to fix this on our anim blueprint, all we need to do is cast this to third person character. And the reason for the cast is this is just a reference to character. It's not a reference to our specific class of third person character. So doing this will allow us to call that function on our character a basic attack. And so now when we press the basic attack button, which in our case is the left mouse button, it will call this animation montage. The animation montage is linked to this animation, which has this notify on that animation. And then in our animation blueprint, when that anim notify is triggered, we'll call basic attack on our player. Now, realistically, you could just connect this here like this and not need to be passing information back and forth. The only issue there, I'll show you really quickly, 
is that it's going to create that sphere as soon as we click the button and not when the player actually swings through that area. So to make it a little bit more realistic, we just want to have the actual damage event trigger when the sword would come in contact with the enemy. You could also put a little delay here if you wanted to. I just think it's a little bit messier that way. And this way we could actually use basic attack for different animations as well. So in the end, I just think this is a little bit better method, even though we're passing information around and there's a lot of different things that we're involving. I think this way creates a little bit better melee system in the long run. So now what we need to do is we need to do something here with this sphere that we're making. So currently we make this sphere and we can interact with things, but nothing actually happens. What I want to do is take this out hit and we can call break and we can break this hit result. And I do cover a lot of this in my blueprints course. I'll put a link in the description where you can get a little bit more in-depth training, but this is called a struct and it can hold multiple variables in one variable so you can pass a lot of information through as one variable. So we can break this struct which gives us access to all the individual variables that are in it. What I wanna do is just do a branch and if we block something, so if something interacts, I want to print string and I want to print the name of the actor that we hit. So now when we interact with that enemy, we should print BP enemy, which we do, which tells us that we are interacting with that enemy. So from here, what I actually wanna do is I wanna cause damage to the enemy. So we could on our enemy, just create some variables for health and that's one way to do it. But we're also gonna probably want some health variables on our player as well. So we would create all the functionality to handle health on our player and then all the functionality to handle health on our enemy. And if there's anything else that needs health, we would have to program that functionality on that actor as well. So we wanna make a modular health component. I do have a separate video on this that you can watch that breaks it down a little bit. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go very quickly and create this component. So real quickly, I just created this BP health component and it has two variables, max health and current health. When we begin play, any actor that has this component will refill the health, which will take whatever the value of max health is and set it to current health. So we'll start with full health. Then I created one other function called damage handling. It takes an input of a float called damage. It's going to take the current health, whatever that is set to, and it's gonna subtract from that the damage that we pass in and then we'll set that to the current health. So if we have 100 health and we take 25 damage, we now have 75 health. Then we wanna check if the health is less than or equal to zero. So if we have 25 health and we take 50 damage, our health will now be below zero. So this will return a true saying that the health is depleted. So here on my enemy, I want to add the health component we just made and we'll use the built-in damage system so i'll say any damage so this event will trigger anytime this actor receives damage from another actor and we can grab a reference to our health component and say damage handling and this will take an input of damage which we can pass from this event and then here we can just create a branch and so ultimately we would want to set up some functionality for if this actor has no more health. So for this one, we can just call I am dead and then we will destroy actor. Now on our character, what I wanna do is I wanna do a check that it has the component. So we'll say get component by class and I want to find my health component and we'll do is valid to see if we return a valid reference to that health component. And we'll plug that in here 
So now what we're doing is we're creating that sphere. If it interacts with something, we'll get true here. And then we wanna take whatever we interacted with and check if it has a health component. And then if it does, meaning this is, this is valid is going to return true, then we will call apply damage. And this node here is linked to this node here. So when we apply damage from our third person character, it will call this any damage event on our enemy. So we can just pass in a value here of 25. And the last thing we need to do is just take this hit actor and pass it into damaged actor because we need to know what actor we actually want to hit. And when I press play, I can go to this enemy and I can hit it once, twice, three times. And on the fourth time it prints, I am dead and it destroys itself. So just to do a quick review and walk through everything, we have this basic attack input. And when we trigger that using our left mouse button, because we hooked that up here, we're gonna play an animation montage. That animation montage plays this animation of our sword swing. And right here, we have this notify that will trigger when we reach this point in the animation. That animation triggers this anim notify event. And we're going to get a reference to our character, which we've set up here based upon whatever the owning actor is of this animation. We're gonna cast that to third person character so we can gain access to the functionality of our third person character blueprint. And from there, we'll call basic attack. When this event triggers, we're going to get the world location and forward vector of our character. We're going to find a point in space that is 150 units directly in front of the character. And we're going to create a sphere that has a radius of 50. We're going to look and see if there's anything in that radius. And if there is, we want to check if that actor that we interact with has the health component. If it does, meaning this will return is valid, we'll apply damage to that actor that we hit of 25 damage. That triggers this any damage event on our enemy. So we'll get access to this health component, which we created, and we'll call a function called damage handling. Damage handling is gonna take that input of damage. It's gonna subtract it from whatever our current health is, reset that to current health, and then we'll check if we have less than zero health. If we do, we're going to trigger these two events, which will print the string and destroy the actor. So hopefully that was a good breakdown of a basic melee system. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments or you can reach out to me on my Discord and there will be a link for that in the description as well. Thanks for watching.